speaker is uh, Professor Andrea Tausen Nicholson from uh, UCL. She is also working extensively in ComBiomed, and her talk will be on uh, training advanced computational methods for clinicians and biomedical scientists. Please, Andrea. Thank you very much, Marco. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, we Hopefully. can hear you very yes. well. Okay, excellent. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I just wanted to um, present to you work that we have done under Comp Biomed and are now doing under Comp Biomed 2 about creating an entirely new community of people who will be using high performance computing. So, let me just work out how. There we go, that's how we switch things. So, one of the very attractive things uh, that people in the biomedical sciences and in clinical sciences are taken by is the vision that was very nicely encapsulated in the virtual humans IMAX film where you can create a computational avatar that contains an individual's data at all scales from the nucleotides of their DNA sequence all the way up to the architecture of their organs and their skeleton. But in practical terms, there are whole areas of people who would love to be engaged in this, but do not have the computational skills to do it. And so this is where we have been developing our efforts in education in Comp Biomed, trying to begin early to get bio, uh, biomedical scientists able to come up to speed on the computational side of things. And there are many barriers that need to be overcome in this. Part of it is through an access to infrastructure, how to be trained, people's views of their difficulty and the demographics. So I'd like to expand on this. The aims that we had when we set out in 2016 at the start of Comp Biomed were to bridge this computational experimental divide and help existing users integrate these two aspects and to create future users, a whole new category of individuals who would be fluent computationally and experimentally and be able to go back and forth between these. And our final objective was to provide tried and tested educational templates so that we could offer these for other universities and other institutions to use. So when we started in 2016, this is an example of the landscape at that time. There was not an awful lot of in, uh, access for people working in the life and health sciences. These are the three machines or HPC facilities in Comp Biomed in 2016. And you can see that in each of them, there is a very large use by chemistry, material science and technology, but not so much by the life and health sciences, which is interesting if you take a look and here we are looking at the higher education first degree, higher education post degree in the UK and comparing that with the UK machine Archer. And you can see that despite having a significant number of people graduating substantially more in the medical and biological sciences, 50% of all of these categories pretty much, the access to Archer is very restricted and very limited. So we set about creating a program that would embed in the university curriculum an opportunity to do computational work using the supercomputing facilities uh, at the HPC centers in Comp Biomed. And we did this for life science undergraduates and also for medical students. And we made all of our resources available for people. We put them into a number of courses. We put them into courses that were credit bearing, so part of the top curriculum. And as we started, we discovered that there was a great need to put much of what we were teaching in our taught curriculum into our key skills curriculum. And so we now are running a program across many years of the undergraduate degree, trying to provide people with the requisite computational skills. We picked something very simple in computational terms because we we're working with a new community and we didn't know how their use of the resource 
uh, would be taken up and how much space they would have if it would fit within the training allocation of the grant, because this was not um, an aspect of the Comp Biomed uh, funded program when we started, and it was something that we added part way through. And so here you can see an experimental workflow that's based around metagenomics and the microbiome, so the population of bacteria that we carry about us with us as humans. And this is the entire, from start to finish, that the students do from sampling their collect, uh, their collecting their samples all the way through to purifying and sequencing the microbial population. And then, of course, this goes into the data analysis. And you can see here, from when we started the program in 2016, because we were running some microbiome studies, we were just doing the computation locally, you can see that when we moved these students onto the HPC facilities at Comp Biomed, uh, that we started to get an increasing number of usage of the facilities. We allocated 100 core hours per science student and 20 core hour, uh, 50 core hours, I believe, per medical student, where we come up with these total numbers allocated. But we ran a very elastic allocation because we were interested to see how the students would make use of the resource. And basically, when they got to the end of the allocated resource, the allocation would be extended again. And so here you can see that there's a significant uptake year on year of the use of the resource by students. And we believe that this, because the numbers are staying very static, is because we have been providing increased computational skills for our students as part of their key skills program so that they are better enabled when they come to use the HPC resources on the ground. We had a 100% success rate for teaching students. We had a very significant improvement in diversity over what is perceived to be the traditional demographic for HPC users. So we were over 50% female and we were over 40% minority ethnic. And we have distinct and recorded examples of employability having been enhanced for our students because of embedding this computation. We were also interested to note that on the research side of things, it also bore fruit. We were able to expand in Comp by Med 2 our education approach so that what was delivered at UCL is now being rolled out at Oxford, at Sheffield, at University Pompe Fabra, and at University of Amsterdam. And by making representation to UKRI, the Research Funding Council, in the UK and asking why there weren't substantial resources for biomedical users when they realized that this training program was in flight and we had taught over 400 students, they provided 13 million pounds of resource through the e-infrastructure strategy. So these are very, very good outcomes for us. So in short, we were able to achieve all of the aims that we had set out to do with the renewal of the Comp Biomed Award in Comp Biomed 2. We had the vehicle and the means for expanding the education program to other universities and institutions, and we can move even further beyond this. So it's been extremely successful. Now, I just wanted to highlight rather quickly, the magnificent seven is what I've been calling them. They are things that we never would have been able to predict when we started this university education program. So the first of the, we think of as unanticipated win number one, a significant engagement with high performance computing for all of these courses. On the graph, you can see the consumption in core hours, and these are our top 10 users in each of these three years. And this dashed line here is the 20 core hours that are required for one complete cycle of execution. And what you can see is that our top 10 users are using substantially more than that, including some who are using very, very high numbers. In fact, almost the totality of the year's allocation for all 100 students. And this is what it looks like when these students gain access to a new resource and start to play with it. So this is really something that we were very happy with. Another way medical students proposing to do extracurricular work, which is exceptional because they have a very charged taught program of study, but they wanted to conduct their own 
experiments that they wish to see published in the Lancet, which we have been supporting. We're providing them with the technical support for this, and a number of our undergraduate students were actually presenters at the CompBiomed conference, and they presented the work that they'd done with the HPC facilities of CompBiomed for their studies. The ordinary uh, outcome is the fact that research funding was able to be obtained to purchase the sequencing instruments for use in this computational experimental education program. Now, these are two Illumina machines. You can see there is Watson on the left and Crick on the right. And we will be able to use these machines. This facility is unique in the world. It's for early career researchers and students to use. And it's what we will be using for the program that we will be running through Comp Biomed 2. Also had our training methodology adopted by learned societies. The Biochemical Society is putting forward our training uh, program. And in this, we are going to be looking at three different ways of analyzing the microbiome data that students have generated through the command line, through Jupyter Notebooks, as we've been doing this year on Cartesius, and also uh, with Alsys Flight, uh, one of our CompBiomed partners, looking at things in the cloud and being able to find opportunities for people to work with different ways of access assessing the resource. We were also tremendously successful in being able to do public engagement. So the virtual human film has been presented to almost a thousand people in person. It has gone uh, to upper parliament in the houses, the UK houses of parliament as part of Sense About Science Week, talking about the importance of using collaborative data and digital evidence at multiple scales. We have been able to publish about this work in newsstand magazines, so we've had tremendous footprint across uh, public fora that we've not typically had our research highlighted in. And absolutely everybody that we've engaged with wants their own digital avatar as soon as possible. Me too. I was most pleased by was the fact that one of the students who had never had any former computational training and had developed it through the medical student training we provided has enrolled in a new intercalated BSc degree in mathematics, computer and medicine. So our training is now providing an entry point for people who are going to be clinically trained and wish to engage with computational aspects of clinical medicine. So we compiled successes uh, in our lessons learned. We had 100% success rate. Everybody student-wise overcame difficulties in running in the different environments. They were on clusters, they were on laptops. We were absolutely delighted to discover that some of the students were logging on to Cirrus, which was the machine that they were first using uh, from their phones. Uh, so they were very adaptable and got onto these things successfully. From our side of things, uh, we were very pleased that we were able to debug and solve problems on the fly successfully. And we learned an awful lot about the way in which people log on or are given accounts or access the systems. And so we were able to uh, accommodate this and these courses provided the input that um, helped relax uh, the fail to ban for serious users. We had some challenges. Um, as, as Gavin Pringle put it, which I thought was the best uh, uh, way of phrasing it, the initial very large disk space was still not enough for excited students. They just consumed uh, compute and storage, and we were very, very lucky uh, to be able to provide the resource they needed at the speed they needed so that they weren't frustrated in this. We found some bugs. We found some user issues that related uh, bugs from running things at scale. We found some user issues um, that included things that related to a lack of familiarity with things like the command line, file path errors, and the general bewilderment at needing to work with a headless system and wondering why there were no other ways of doing these things. Um, so that is something I'd like to come back to in a moment. It's worth saying that the code that was ported to the HPC facilities is Python-based code. 
and it had never been run on HPC before. So this was a first to have this running on three separate machines. So it ran on Cirrus, on Cartesius, and on Marin Ostrom 4, where it's been used for the Barcelona Winter School training for the last two years, three years. Our next steps are to expand through CompiMed2 this education training program, as I've said, at these four universities and beyond. At UCL, we are adding new elements of computational biology to our university curriculum. We are trying to ensure that our students bridge the digital skills gap. We're introducing machine learning and small MD simulations, which will consume more uh, compute, but will provide students with the opportunity to run uh, protein small molecule simulations, and we're also looking at enhancing the user experience. And in that light, I just want to finish with this final thought. And this was from feedback from a medical student who found that the most enjoyable thing in the study that they'd done using the supercomputing was the exposure to high performance computing. Although they do note that on the flip side, as they describe it, it was extremely tedious and they struggled with the typing errors or things that would impede the progress. And their last line of, unfortunately, as I have come to learn, the nature this is the nature of writing code and nothing can be done to change this. And this is something that the HPC centers and the trainers uh, in this program are now working towards to ensure that access is easier and some of these things that might be a disincentive for other people are overcome. So I'd just like to acknowledge the Comp Biomed partners who were involved in this initial education training program at University College London. We had people on the teaching side of things. We had people in the medical school. Our external examiner was tremendously supportive of the integration of computational work on HPC in the curriculum and helped us shape these things and tune them as part of a course. We had stellar support from EPCC, Gavin and Terry, from Surf Sara, Marco, and from the BSC with Mariano, Ruth, and Alfonso. And I would just like to stop there and thank you for your attention and ask if there are any questions. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, we run out uh, over the break, but I think we have time for a few questions, if any. I actually have one, Andrea. Um, yes. I don't know, in your experience, uh, what were the, the biggest barriers to engage with this medical user in getting into HPC and more computing? And uh, you think it's we need, uh, as uh, from the side of HPC Center, we need more to provide this kind of user with basic uh, compute and programming training, or more developing services that make use of, in the back end of uh, HPC infrastructure, but are usable for not expert computational scientists. I think the problem for the medical students is different than the problem for the science students. The science students have far more time in their curriculum and many more places where you can insert computational aspects to their program of study so that they, and we need to take better advantage of these as educators and the support of the facilities will be helpful in this as well to make sure people can continually use and reinforce their skills. On the medical side of things, it's more difficult because their curriculum is very, very, tightly programmed and they don't have a lot of time so they can't look at things in that much depth and I think that the approach there will be different and will involve needing to make resources or um, things that they can use and try available to them but find a way to join it up so there's a logical progression and they can see how to develop in that and what to build it towards so if they're interested for example in cardiovascular work and qualifying as a cardiovascular consultant maybe we can go down one pathway if they're interested in being a geneticist maybe go down another great thanks sandra uh, again excellent work uh, 